morning. And the topic that I have for this morning is good tidings of great joy. Amen. The topic is good tidings of great joy. And I know that in this season of Christmas, there's a lot of festivities in the air. There's a lot of celebrations um, going on. And also, this is a season that a lot of people receive good news. Amen? Amen. The pastor said that the, the best time, one of the best times for a man to propose to a woman is when it's during this Christmas time because there's a lot of joy in the air. There's a lot of celebration in the air. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And also, when, when Jesus was born, there was also a lot of um, activities that was, um, that was going on where he came into this world. So my topic today is that I, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And my belief, and I pray that today, God has good news for someone today in the name of Jesus. The angels announced to the shepherds that he was bringing them good tidings of great joy. And in this season of Christmas, God has great joy. God has tidings. God has good news for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I, and I just want to share um, a little bit of what Christmas means to me. I remember um, when I first came to this country, it was December 24th of, two, of 1993, and that was a day before Christmas. And I remember how I felt because at that time we came to New York and there was, a, there was snow on the ground at that time. There's a Christmas trees and everything going on. And it just gave me that that's the the best christmas that i ever had because i saw the christmas trees the snow in the air people rejoicing and that always had left um a great a great impact for me when i look back and i say which one is the best christmas that i have i can remember that one as being the best christmas amen amen and i know that many of you also have christmases that you can look back on and you know that this this was this was a a a a, a, a christmas that i can definitely remember but my prayer for you today is that this Christmas will be a Christmas that you remember in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let us turn our Bibles to the book of um, Luke chapter 2. And today we're going to be looking at different people that received good news um, around the time that Jesus was born. And we're going to look at what, what caused them to receive that good news, how they received the good news and the application for us today. Amen. Amen. So let us turn to the book of Luke chapter 2. Amen. The book of Luke, Luke chapter 2 from verse 8 to 20. And we're going to read a number of scriptures because I want us to truly um, get a sequence of what happened when Jesus was born. I know many of us know the story, but I'm pretty sure if I ask a few questions now, not everyone can tell me where exactly in the Bible that the Bible records the story of Christmas, amen? So the Bible records the story of Christmas in two books of the Bible, the book of Matthew and the book of Luke. So today we're going to do a few, read, a few scripture readings um, just to get us a picture of what was going on during this time that we're celebrating. So the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 8, and it says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round, round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a, a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. And all that they heard and wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Verse 20. And the shepherds returned and glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen as it was told to them. Lord, do I lift up this word into your hands. 
I pray that you take absolute control, O God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I submit myself to you. I pray, Holy Spirit, take absolute control. I pray, Lord, that you speak to your people today, O God. May your people receive, O God, a word that will bring life. May they receive good news from you today. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the shepherds were one group of people that received good news around the time that Jesus was born. Praise the Lord. And we can ask, why did God decide to, to reveal to the shepherds that, that, that the Savior was born? The shepherds were the first group of people that, that, that God revealed to publicly that the Savior was born. And looking back, shepherds at that time were people that were considered to be unclean um, um, amongst the Jews. Amen? So they were unclean maybe because, the, uh, because of their association with animals. So they, were, so they were always at the outskirts of town. Amen? But the Bible says that these were the people that God revealed to that the Savior was going to be born. Amen? Amen. And the shepherds also were people that provided the animals that people would use to, to do an, an atonement for sins. As you guys remember, that whenever the people sinned at that time, they would have to sacrifice animals in order to make themselves clean again. So the shepherds would be the ones that would provide these animals but however, the shepherds were seen as people that were unclean. So they're always people that were at the outskirts of town. So these were the people that God decided to reveal or to first publicly announce that the Savior of the world was going to come. Amen? Amen? So the Bible says here, he said to them that, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Amen. And many of us can ask, why is it that God decided to reveal or to announce his coming, the coming of Christ the Savior to these people that seemed insignificant, that seemed unclean, that seemed to be the one that everyone looked down on. But this tells us that, that, our, that God's thoughts are not our thoughts and that his ways are not our ways. Amen. God decided to reveal his coming to people that were insignificant, to people that were undeserving. And what does that tell us? Sometimes we, we, we look, when, when God decides to do something good, when, when, when God decides to announce the good news to people, and people sometimes look at themselves and think that God cannot do anything good for me, amen? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes people look at themselves and they think that, can God truly do something good for me? You look at yourself and you say, can I... Am I truly deserving of a blessing from God? But I want to tell you or come to encourage you today that as God decided to reveal his coming, publicly reveal his coming to these people that seemed insignificant, even in that state that you are, you feel like you feel that a blessing cannot come to you. My, my charge for you today is that the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven actually belongs to you, that, that God can actually reveal, that God can cause good news to happen to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So God chose these people to reveal, to reveal the coming of his son. And what did the shepherds do in response when they heard the good news? The Bible says that they went immediately to look for this child that was born. Amen? And then when they found the baby that was born, they returned back glorifying and praising God. And they told all those around them what they had seen. Praise the Lord. What does that mean for us? What does that teach us? One... That when we receive the good news or that we receive the good news of salvation as these shepherds received, they got the news that the Savior, that the child was born who was going to be a Savior of the world was coming into the earth. They didn't keep the news to themselves. Instead, they decided to spread the news around. Praise the Lord. So for us, what does that teach us? It teaches us that we should share Jesus with those around us. Amen. In this season of Christmas, as we celebrate Christ the Lord who, who came into this world, Jesus came in as a, as a child. He came in as a baby, but he did not remain a baby. Amen? The Bible says that he came. He came from heaven to earth so that he can save us from a life of sin. That he can save us from a life of damnation. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 7, it says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, and who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. So in this season of Christmas, I encourage you not to keep this Savior to yourself. Amen? I encourage you to talk to others about Christ, to share, to share Christ to others, that they may receive salvation. Amen? 
That's the reason that Christ came into this world, that he might save us from our sins. Amen? Amen. We're going to look at another um, person who received good news at this time. And that person is Mary. Amen? So Mary was the mother of Jesus. Um, we're going to look at the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. And as I said, we're going to read these accounts so that we can uh, know exactly what the Bible says um, about the account that happened when Jesus was born. So good news for Mary, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. And it says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy... God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and, says, and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. You will receive and conceive, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call his name Jesus, for he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. The Bible says that Mary asks, How will this be um, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Then the Bible says that it says, uh, goes on to say, Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her, sixth, in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word of God will ever fail. Another translation says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. So what, what caused Mary to receive good news? I believe it was the favor of God that caused her to be the one that was chosen. Amen. To be the one that God decided to use, uh, the one that God decided to use to bring forth um, the child who was going to be the savior of the world. Amen. The Bible also says that Mary was humble. Amen. So Mary was willing to allow herself to be used by God. When, when an angel, or when, when you receive the news that, 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 that as a virgin that you were going to conceive, that you're going to become pregnant, I don't know how many people will receive that news. But the Bible says that Mary was humble because she allowed herself to be used by God. Amen. She allowed God to interject in her life. This was a woman that was um, promised to be married to Joseph. And then all of a sudden, before the wedding occurred, the angel appeared to her and says that you're going to bring forth a son. You're going to become pregnant and bring forth a son. But, th but Mary did not uh, object to what God um, had, had, had said to her. Mary received the word. Amen? Mary was willing to allow her life to be used by God. Amen? Amen. And in this time, for us to receive good news, amen, for, God, for us to receive the blessing that God has for us, we have to realize that sometimes we have to let God do what he wants to do, amen. The news that we're, the prayer that we're praying about and the news that we receive initially may not exactly match up, amen. But if we allow God to do what he wants to do, God will be able to work out the rest for us, amen. Amen. And when Mary allowed herself to be used by God, from her came forth the, the Son or the Savior who brought salvation to mankind. Amen? Amen. And also through Mary, the Lord also blessed her cousin Elizabeth. Amen? Because Elizabeth also had conceived. Elizabeth had gone many years without having any, any child. Amen? Elizabeth had gone several years. She was now in her, in her, in her old age and should not have a child. But, but, but the Bible says that God said that he heard the cry of Elizabeth and her husband. And God decided to give to them a son who was John the Baptist. Amen? And John the Baptist was going to be the forerunner of Jesus, was going to be the one that would announce 
announce the coming of Jesus. Amen. But I want to point something, point out something there. The Bible says that Mary, as a virgin, she, she conceived and had a child. Amen. And also Elizabeth, in her old age, after many years, also conceived and had a child. Amen. And I just want to encourage us that sometimes we are praying for things that we don't deserve. Or we're praying for things that we seem unqualified for. Amen. On the other hand, there are people that are also have been praying for something for a long time. Amen. And, and, and it seems that many years has, have gone by. You have not received that thing you're praying for. But, in see, but we see here that both Mary, who was a virgin, who was not yet expected to have a child, and Elizabeth, who had gone several years waiting for a child, both of them received good news at this time. So I come to tell you today that if you are praying for something that you may seem to be unqualified for, amen, it may seem that you don't deserve that thing. It may seem that you're praying for it, but you can't quite say that because the people who hear you say it, they'll, they'll think that you're wanting too much, that you're expecting too much. But I come to tell you today that as Mary received a blessing that was even before her time, that God will cause that thing to happen to you in the name of Jesus. And also, if, if you're here and you've been praying for something for a long time, and the Bible says that, that, that um, the Bible says that Elizabeth was faithful, she and her husband were faithful in, in, the, in the things of God. And Elizabeth, after many years, God was able to give her that child that she was praying for. My prayer for you today is that the good news will come to you in the name of Jesus. That even nothing that you've been asking God for for many years, that in this time, in this time when the angels announced good news to both Mary and Elizabeth, my prayer for you is that God will announce your own good news in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to also talk about another group of people that received good news. Amen. Praise the Lord. Another group of people that received good news. And this was Joseph. Joseph, the, the, the husband of Mary. Or Joseph, the father of Jesus. And we're going to go to the account in Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to read from verse 18 to verse 24. And in Matthew it says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the Lord and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And it says, all this took place to reveal what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel had commanded him and took Mary as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Amen. Amen. The question also here is what caused Joseph to receive this good news? And I believe that it was also the grace of God that allowed Joseph to receive this good news. Joseph was a, Joseph was a carpenter. He was an ordinary person. Amen. There was nothing that seemed significant about his life. There was nothing that you could look at that would point to him as the one that God will use to be the father that will raise um, the savior of the world. But one thing, one thing that the Bible says that was that Joseph come from the lineage of David. Amen. He came from the lineage that was going to produce the savior. So Joseph was in the pipeline of grace. Amen. I come to tell you today that as long as you're connected to this house, that you are in the, pipe, in the pipeline of grace and the favor of God will rest upon your life in the name of Jesus. So Joseph was, had the grace of God upon his life and he was also connected to the line, to the, to the lineage of David, to the, to, to the genealogy of Jesus. And that's how he was selected to be the man that was going to father um, Jesus, that was going to raise Jesus. 
The Bible says that Joseph was a just man, that he was a righteous man. So when Joseph received the good news, how did he respond? So if we can imagine this, Joseph was noticing that the, the person that he was going to marry, Mary, that she was beginning to show that she was pregnant. So of course, Joseph knew that, that both of them had not committed anything, had not done anything. So that means that this child must have come from someone else. So Joseph was going to quietly put Mary away. But the, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and told her that that which was inside her wife was from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Bible gave him a series of instructions. The Bible says that when Joseph woke up, that he obeyed, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. Amen. Again, we also see here someone that was willing to let God interject in his, in his life. Amen. We see here that Joseph allowed himself because when people saw that Mary was pregnant and they had not yet been married, people would have thought that the two of them had done something that, that, that caused this child to come about. But Joseph decided to bear that embarrassment. Amen. Joseph decided to bear that shame. Amen. He decided to obey what the angel of the Lord said, said to, said to him. He decided to, to still keep Mary as her wife. Amen. Amen. Good news came to, to Joseph because God was able to see that he was a man that was willing to be obedient. Many times we ask God for something or we ask God to bless us in certain ways, but we will be obedient with what God, with, 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 with what God asks us to do. Sometimes we miss our blessings because God knows that if he blesses us with that thing, that we'll not, that we'll not be obedient, obedient in the things that, that he asks us to do. But God was able to see someone that was obedient. Someone was able to allow themselves to be used by God. God knew that he could trust him to be the one that will raise the Savior of the world. Amen? Amen. And I said that sometimes when God gives us good news, the beginning may not be comfortable. But in obedience, we lay grounds for us to receive the greater blessing and the greater glory that God has for us. God is always working something out for us. God has a way of doing things that do not make sense. But he is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He knows how to divinely orchestrate things to work out for our good. So God may be telling you to do something that does not quite line up to what you're praying for. It may not, it may not quite line up to what you, are, what you think that that's, the, or a way that you think that God would do it. But just trust God and believe God and be obedient to his word because God will work things out for our good in the name of Jesus. God knows how the beginning will be. God knows how the end will be. And God knows how he does things. And God will divinely orchestrate things for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in verse 20, praise the Lord. In verse 20, the angel of the Lord said to Joseph, he says, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Ghost. She will give birth to a son, and you to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And then verse 23, which is when I, this is a place I want to emphasize. It says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that a, a virgin will conceive, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. So, there's, so there is an obvious contradiction there, that a virgin will bring forth a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel. Amen? I said that many times, God seems to bring things that seem to be the opposite. God, God seems to bring out a good, or God seems to bring good out of something that seems negative. Amen? The Bible says here, or oh, oh God seems to do the opposite of what we humanly might, might expect. The Bible says that a virgin was going to bring forth a son. Amen? And I, and I know that many times in our lives, there are things that are going on in our, in our lives, and it seems that something good cannot come out from that thing. But I come to tell you that God is the one that works in opposites sometimes. He's the one that works in opposites. Sometimes from that, bitterness, from that bitterness, you cannot expect sweetness to come out of it. Amen. 
But God is a God that's able to take something bad or able to flip, able, able to flip things. Amen. The Bible says here that, that, that this virgin was going to conceive and give birth to a son. And this was only going to happen by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It says that, she, um, do not be afraid to take Mary as well because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to turn, to turn the impossible into the, to turn the impossible into, into possible. Amen. It takes the Holy Spirit to turn what seems to be opposite into what we, it takes the Holy Spirit to get an, an, an opposite result of what is expected. Amen. Amen. So I come to encourage you that in that thing in your life that may seem to be negative or they may seem to be bitter, amen, it will take the power of the Holy Spirit to turn that thing into a positive, amen. The Bible gives many instances where God seems to use the, where God seems to work in, in oppositions, amen. The Bible called Abraham a father of many nations when he had no child, amen. And the Bible says that he also called Mary a mother of many nations when she had no child. Amen. The Bible says that he called Gideon a mighty man of valor when he was seen as a cowardly man. Amen. And the Bible says that Paul, or we know from the, from the Bible that Paul, who was a persecutor of Christ, who killed even the Christians, that God turned him into an evangelist that could preach Christ to the Gentiles. Amen. So... God seems to sometimes, he seems to, he seems to take things that seem to be insignificant or take things that seem to be opposite and he's, he's, he seems to flip them. And no one can question God as to why he does those things, but God, but, 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 but it takes the power of the Holy Spirit, amen, for God to be able to turn, make those oppositions happen, amen, amen. So my encouragement for us today is that good news, as the angels brought good news, tidings of great joy to these people during the season of Christmas, that, that God will also bring good news to us in this season. Amen. Amen. As we, as we celebrate Christmas, I pray that the joy of Christmas will truly fill our hearts. Amen. Amen. But there is, there is one reason why we celebrate Christmas, and that is, that Christ the Lord came into this world for mankind, amen? So we can receive several good news in our life, but the main good news that we must receive during this time of Christmas is to receive Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, amen? The Bible says that he brings tidings of great joy, which shall be to all that, in, that born in this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. God brought his son, Jesus Christ, into this world to save mankind from a life of sin and from a life of damnation. Amen. And it's for us to receive this gift that God has for us. Amen. The Bible says to as many as that have received him into their hearts and into their lives, to as many as believe in his name, that he gives them the power to become the sons of God. Amen. So this is, this is the true reason why Christ came into this world that all mankind might be turned to him, that we might receive the salvation, the salvation that, 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 that he has given us through his son. The Bible says that Jesus came from heaven on earth, specifically going to save mankind from their sins. Amen. And my prayer for you today is that you, would, that you truly have received Christ in your heart, that in this season of Christmas, you not forget the, the, the true reason of Christmas, the, the, the true good news that came to mankind, which is that Jesus came into this world. Um, to save us from a life of sin and also to be the savior for all of mankind. Amen.